A message for your heart. I do not know how you feel. I do not know what you experience right now. But I feel in my spirit that maybe, just maybe, there is someone that needs encouragement. There is someone out there that uh, feels discouraged. There is someone down there, over there, up there, <laughs> anywhere, that uh, has his heart broken. Maybe life is not what you expect it to be. Maybe you put your trust too much in people and people uh, they show you the door. Maybe, just maybe, there is something now in your life uh, so painful that uh, you cannot hold on anymore. If something like that, it's your case. Hold your horses. <laughs> there is hope. I do not know what you feel. You see, now, we're not in connection, all of us, but then in eternity, all of us will be connected. All of us will be able to worship. All of us. All of us will be able to give Him the praise that He needs. There, in eternity. We're not going to have to guess our thoughts anymore. We're not going to have to imagine what that person might think. What that person might feel. There, in eternity, we will know. We will be able to hear our very thoughts. All of us united in worshipping for eternity. But here... Here, sadly, it is uh, this kind of life. Uh, so many times along the way, so many times along our journey towards heavenly Jerusalem, we get discouraged. We get tired. We feel betrayed. We feel sad. A deep sadness that threatens to overcome us and to go around our heart like a dark cloud. To stay there around our heart and not to allow us to breathe. Every single bit of our heart will feel heavy. Did you ever experience this way? Because I did. Have you ever experienced like, um, maybe there is no tomorrow? Because I did. What gives us strength in those moments? The faith that we have, brothers and sisters. Let's anchor on our faith as strong as we can because that's what gives us power. In this kind of moment, remember what the Lord said, whoever built his house on a rock, his house in moments of uh, storms and floods will keep strong. You, my subscribers from Philippines, every time you hear a flood, you know very well from a painful experience what I'm talking about. If your house is built up on a high hill, somewhere on a rock, far away from water, far away from anything that it might destroy it, then your house is safe. The same is here. If we build our life on the rock of salvation, on Jesus Christ himself, we will be safe. In moments of depression, in moments when you feel discouraged, in moments when you feel so down that you can barely breathe, in those moments in which you think that no one is there for you and if you call on your phone, it seems that no one wants to pick up to talk to you. It is what it is. Many times this is what life gives to us. But all that has a purpose to lead us closer and closer to unity, communion with God, with Jesus. That is the purpose of your pain. That is the purpose of your trials. In those moments when you feel extremely discouraged, you need encouragement. And we find this encouragement, of course, in the Word of God. Before getting deep, let's just uh, close our eyes and uh, let's just uh, bow our heads in prayer. Let's talk to God. Let's talk to God. God, we come to you. We come to you for encouragement. We come to you for strength. We come to you, Lord, uh, because uh, maybe, just maybe, we're not enough, isn't it? In you, we lose ourselves. And in you, we become complete. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you for giving us this reminder again using life circumstances that we definitely are not enough. With you, we are complete. 
We want to read your word and to find encouragement. We want to read your word and to build us up. Your word has the power to give us life. Your word is the breath of life. Thank you, Lord. We are ready to receive. And we will open our minds and we will open our hearts wide. Thank you. We praise you and we worship you. Amen. I found some verses, some beautiful verses that I want to read to you. To give you and to give to me as well encouragement encouragement psalm 34 verse 17 to 19 when the righteous cry for help the lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles the lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit many are afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivers him out of them all the life doesn't promise you something uh, like a walk in the park only pink clouds only whatever you want and you, whatever you expect from life you're gonna have moments in which you will definitely feel down or you will definitely feel broken into a million of pieces but here yeah, the promise stand strong when you cry for help the Lord hears when you cry for help brother sister the Lord will deliver you out of your trouble Psalm 147 3 he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds where do you get your healing from from the Lord he is the one healing you he is the one binding up your wounds Psalm 55 or 22 cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you he will never permit the righteous to be moved write down these wonderful promises this is what you need to believe in those moments when you feel discouraged you have to open the bible open the bible even when you feel joyful open the bible when you feel any kind of feelings that you might experience open the bible just like the word of god says in time and in no time isaiah 41 10 dynamite dynamite fear not for i am with you be not dismayed for i am your god i will strengthen you i will help you i will uphold you with my righteous right hand amazing isn't it amazing beautiful put that in your mind please embrace that with everything that you have embrace it apply it in your life by believing those wonderful promises he will strengthen you he will help you he will uphold you with his righteous right hand isaiah 40 with 31 but they who wait for the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint how many promises why are we are not opening the bible why we are not reading these wonderful promises that the lord has for you and for me why we're missing so much if we're not reading this and more we're missing so much if we're not believing this isaiah again it seems that he is the prophet of uh, encouragement is <laughs> the prophet that uh, speaks for the first time about uh, the Lamb of God coming as a Savior. He is the prophet of encouragement and hope and joy. Isaiah. Oh, I love this prophet. I love this prophet. And I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know. In paths that they have not known, I will guide them. I will burn the darkness before them into light. The rough places into level ground. These are the things I do. I do not forsake them. Do you understand the intensity of God's promises in here? Even the blind, if they are righteous, if they are living their life in holy fear, if they live their life in unity with God, every single day, allowing the Holy Spirit to guide them, even they, even they will find protection, 
in the arms of the Lord in direction because they will not use these physical eyes, but they will use the eyes of the Spirit. Amazing, isn't it? Jeremiah 29 11. A verse that defines my life. A verse that impacted me in ways that I cannot explain. When I thought that everything will collapse. When I thought that uh, that's it. That's my last day. This is that from here I have no no more to carry on. And this verse came along and, and it reminded me that uh, the things are actually different than what I feel. Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope believe these promises with the Lord you have a future with the Lord you have a hope believe these promises don't believe the promises of this world don't believe the promises of your best friend don't believe the promises even of your spouse we all humans and we all fail believe the promises of the Lord Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come to me, all who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you hope and rest. Romans 8.28 And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to His purpose. Now this verse, you need to analyze it very, very careful. Because it says that all things work together for good. But. For those who are called according to His purpose and His purpose for your life and my life is holiness and righteousness. I live my life in holiness. I apply righteousness as a daily reminder, as a daily walking. Yes, all things will work together for my good eventually. Believe it. It's true. 1 Corinthians 9 with 24 Do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. He's there to encourage you. He will lead you there. And when you fall, when you have no more strength, He'll do more. He will carry you upon His arms. Don't rely on your feelings. Don't rely on those circumstances that might feel and might be seen so scary those circumstances are coming like heavy clouds and they engulf you and you are feeling like something is pushing you against the wall you cannot breathe your heart is galloping with fear do not believe do not believe your feelings but believe the word of God the word of God is there for you and for me to encourage us to give us what we are missing Philippians 4 and 19 And my God will supply every need of yours according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Search His kingdom and His righteousness and all the other things will be added upon to you. Be kingdom minded brothers and sisters. Be kingdom minded. Please make us a priority. God, make us a priority to push His kingdom. As far and far as you can work work for his kingdom do not expect your pastor your elder or any other brother or sister that has the gift of exhortation just him to work just her what about you all of us we've been called and then you will see it's repression and uh, all the negative toxic feelings well, they're not gonna knock at the, your door anymore they're not gonna knock or maybe if they will knock they will not be able to get in because you'll be safe. You will believe the promises of God. That's what you need. And that's what I need to do. First Peter 1, 6 and 9 as a concluder. And this you rejoice, though now for a little while. If necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. So that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen Him, you love Him. Though you do not seek Him now, you believe in Him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This verse, well, only using this verse you could do a preaching. Look at this. We rejoice regardless of our circumstances if we are anchored in God. 
And these circumstances, they are just for a little while. You have an eternity to rejoice and enjoy with Christ. And if here there are some troubles, tribulations, a broken heart, maybe your spouse is not loyal to you. Maybe your spouse doesn't love you anymore. Maybe your spouse uh, doesn't consider you anymore what you used to be once upon a time. Maybe there is another situation. Maybe your children now they are far away from the Lord. And regardless of all your effort, you try so hard. You've done your best to show them the way, but they decided differently. Believe. Believe, Romans 8, 28, all things work together. Believe that God still has His hand upon you, upon your family, upon your heart, upon your mind. Do not let go. Don't be discouraged. Feed your heart with the Word of God. And look for a fellowship of brethren with the same mindset as you. They will help you. Let's help each other. Let's outreach to each other. 2021 will be a year of grace. Will be a year in which we will understand how much we need to love each other. How much we need to show that we are genuine. How much we need to show that our Christianity is not nominal. That our Christianity means a daily walk with Christ. Not just one time a week. That's what many times denominational Christianity is doing. It uh, forms two categories of people. One category of people, they are Christians only on Sunday. And they listen diligently to the pastor and they praise. They shout and scream hallelujah. And then they come home and they carry on having a proudful heart. Being disobedient uh, to the Lord. Not understanding their, their purpose in the family. Shrinking their responsibilities. Lying. Watching worldly entertainment. Dressing like the world, speaking like the world, and all those things makes you wonder what kind of encounter with God they had. That's the first category. And there is a second category of people that understand. They understand that they have to share their faith. They understand that they have to walk daily in the Spirit. They understand that the life of a Christian is not just one time a week and not only on the Zoom, on, on, only on the building. They understand. They understand that it's not just a pastor that uh, has the duty to deliver the word and outreach for souls. They understand. So they walk from victory to victory because they understand. But sadly, that's just a minority. Come on, let's run to that minority. Let's not be with the majority. Let's run. Let's be a handful of people. We don't need to be many, but if we are a handful of people that we really genuinely believe and love the Lord, we can change the world. Look at the 12 disciples. They were just 12. And look at the change that they've done. They steer the world. They define our society, our humanity. They put their fingerprint on this humanity because they wanted to be used mightily by God. They were willing. Who can do that as well? Stop us from being the same. Come on, let's do it. Are you ready? Come on. I know, I know. I know it's hard. But with the Lord, we can do everything. God bless you all. And uh, I think for today, this is the last. But see you tomorrow again. Keep close to God. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. You'll find it there in the link. And let's, uh, let's move on more and more. Let's uh, push uh, the limits. <laughs> let's uh, stay in trouble, the positive trouble for the Lord. Let's speak about Him. Let's outreach the lost. Come on, let's do it together. I can't do it on my own. I need you.